When I first saw him, the first second I saw him, I thought it was gonna be a lineman. Man, he was thick, he was big, he was crying, he was hollering. And that name is still throughout this day. Everybody calls him Tank. Tank, what's your name? I noticed that he stuttered when he first started talking. When Tank is not comfortable, he, he'll start stuttering a little bit. Other than that, he, he's good. You wouldn't even know it. He said uh, a couple of times he noticed when he went to another school, he heard, you know, like, oh, this dude stuttered and stuff like that. But he never would talk. And the teachers would come and tell us that we might have to put him in a special program. I said, what do you mean a special program? He can do anything you want him to do. He can figure out any kind of problem you want him to figure out. And sure enough, he showed him. Dean's List, Honor Roll. He was a lot of fun. He didn't get in a lot of trouble. He just wanted to be around his parents and play sports. Sports was his thing. I started playing football when I was in third grade, so um, that's about eight years old. Like I started out playing running back and I played defensive end. <laughs> he didn't really know how to tackle, all he, all he knew how to run. He was a natural. When he first got the ball in his hand, man, he made a cutback run about 80 yards for a touchdown. And he got hooked. No soccer, no anything. That was what he wanted to do in his life. The guys had angles on him, and he just found another gear and just ran away from it. And Pop Warner, who would always run sweeps, and my main goal was to hurry me get to the outside so I could outrun everybody and score. I was more like a speed than a, a cutter. Out here, they have like a mercy rule. Okay, now if you three touchdowns ahead, they call the game. That's it. So, when Tank would get the ball, he had three times, three carries, the game was over. So the next game, you know, he did it again. So I get a call from the administrator saying that Tank only can run in between the tackles, and if that don't work, you know, you have to set him out. So they had a typed up memo saying that number 43 only can run inside, you know. Don't let him run outside because you can't nobody catch him. So they, they changed the rules right in mid season. So he got a carry straight up the gut. Do hit him, but couldn't bring him off his feet. And he just gone again. So this time they sit on the bench. Now I'm starting to get a little bit concerned because I'm looking at him on the bench. You know, I'm looking, I said, you ain't having any fun. He said, no. But it got to a point that it kind of made me mad. And that's when my dad had kind of changed me into a different league where it didn't matter how much I scored. They just let you play. Man, Tank got in that league and he just tore it up. I think he ended up with 50 touchdowns, over 2,000 yards rushing. Now right now we're at Heritage Park. This is where, um, this is where I started at. Like when I started playing, it was more like just for fun. Like we was all kids and we were just having a great time. I think I really enjoyed this. Like that feeling where right after a game and you win it. That's, that's probably my main, that's my main memory out here. I actually scored my first touchdown over here in this end zone. It, it was a toss play. I had broke to the outside and I was running down. Then I scored, I had jumped up, spiked the ball to my legs. My dad got mad at me for celebrating. Uh, so that's when I scored a touchdown. I don't never do too much. Growing up, Lake North won championships. That's what they did. So my first year, I came to Lake North. Now, I'm the new pup, so it got to be hard on me. But it got to a point, Coach Weir, he had kind of seen that I was kind of getting mad at him. And so then he had pulled me to the side. I'm like, Darren, the reason why I'm so hard on you like this, I guess he's a lot in me. Oh, he was a tremendous worker. You would never, ever have a hint that I'm kind of a big dog on campus. He was never about what was good for Darren, ever. His humility, people just loved him. When he went into first hour, English, whatever it was, that was the most important hour of the day to him. And that transpired hour after hour after hour. He wanted to be the best in everything he did. I mean, when he first came out, everybody was like, wow, I want to see this kid. And people was getting off of work on Friday nights early, standing room only. It was coverage, live TV, everything. And every time he seemed like he touched the ball, he ran for the best time. They have the best player in Kansas City. His name, Darren Sproles. Unstoppable. Here's Sproles with the quickness. Oh, 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 oh. He's got oh, high speed. Oh, oh. See you Absolutely jaw-dropping run by Darren Spool. You never know what's going to happen once you put the ball in that young man's hands. Oh, I love this kid. That's right, Kevin. Darren is having an outstanding game this evening. Two touchdowns. Mom, how do you feel? Um, I don't know. <laughs> you don't know. It's just quite exciting for you. Overwhelming. When he was in high school, 
we knew something was wrong with my wife. She kept saying, you know, her side was hurting. So we went to a specialist and then, you know, looked at her and they said, there's something there, you know. Come to find out it was, it was colon cancer. Knowing that your mother has cancer, uh, it's tough. But during that whole time, not, not one time did I ever hear her complain or say that she was tired or none of that. Like for me to see that, that just showed me how strong a woman that she was. So I think that's where I get my strength from. I feel like from my mother. So he came home and, you know, visit her and talk to her. You know, she'd been in the bed for months and she got up that day. She was walking around, talking, fixing breakfast. And they was walking up down the stairs and everything. And she was just, I mean, laughing and talking and laughing and talking. And, and the next day she was gone. And then I remember I had came home, like when it was time for me to go back to school, she, she just kept on grabbing my hand, grabbing my hand. And then I remember right when I got back to school, whatever, that's my dad called. Then I picked up the phone and told me uh, she just passed. See, but it seemed like she was like waiting for me like to come home. Uh, like before she left us. The recruiting was hard on him. He didn't get a ton of letters because he was too small to play Big 12 football or Big 10 football. And there was a lot of schools that wanted to move me to slot. I wanted to play running back. That was my dream to play running back. He was like, uh, they think I can't play, huh? That's what they're saying. So he gets home. Mel was sitting on the table. Okay, say it had a wildcat, perfect wildcat on it. Let her up, open it. He said, Dad, they just offered me a full ride. I said, see? He said, no. Now, that's when they chipped down his shoulder right there. He said, no. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna show him I can play Big 12, Big 10, Pac, whatever. I'm gonna show him. So with K-State, when I got the depth chart, I was like, man, when they got me at six. So I was down on the scout team for about three days. Then the time back I was, I like to make moves, like make people miss. So I was doing that on the scout team right after like the second day of doing that. Leaf in the corner said, dang it, Sproles, just run straight, just run straight. I was like, why you want me to run straight? That's not my type of running style. So then after I told him that, he had told Coach Snyder that I need to be down there like with a starting team. But it always seemed like, you know, maybe Darren had a little chip on his shoulder. Uh, because other schools didn't recruit him and because, you know, he felt like he had something to prove. K-State had called me and said, hey, Mr. Sproul. He said, Darren, he's special. Freshman, yeah, true freshman. He got over 400, 500 yards that year. In sophomore year, he broke records and he still got records up there today that I don't think anybody gonna break. His height and his size really played to an advantage for him. He's got all these big offensive linemen, these big defensive linemen, and defensive people can't find him. And he has great vision in regards to, you know, where to go with the ball. People just couldn't find him, and he'd find that crease that was there, and bang, all of a sudden he was gone. He was an All-American, again, fifth in the Heisman. And he went to the combines and uh, the, the measurables again, and uh, they called his name, and he, he stood up there, and they said his height, five, six a lot of owners and a lot of coaches you know, giggling. He stepped on the scale, 170. They even laughed even harder. So he called me after it was over with, and he said, Dad, he said, they, they, they laughed at me. I said, well, you know what you gotta do then, right? He said, I'm gonna make sure they know who I am. Like, I had kind of known, like, the teams were worried about my size. They told me if I was, like, 5'8", five, 5'9", five, I would have been a top five pick. The hardest part of it was seeing running backs go that you knew that you are better than. But it was all the process. Jack of all trades type. It's Darren Sproles to San Diego. If you look at a kid here at Kansas State, he carried the load there, despite the fact he's only 5'6", but he's KSU's all-time leading rusher. And that says a lot. Can flat out fly. So when he got to San Diego, he was like five on the running back depth squad. He was like, man, I got to start from the bottom again. I said, yeah, you got to start from the bottom again. And he carved out a niche in the NFL. It's still going on 13 years later. I want to be remembered as a player man that gave everything he's got.
One Steeler defender and finds Sproles. Sproles cuts back to the middle. Sproles wiggles twice, but yes, he takes it home for the touchdown. Whenever someone tells me that I can't do something, I'm going to work extremely hard to prove to you that I can do something. That you told me I can't. Like now, they still tell me stuff now that I'm getting too old to be a running back now. That's another thing I got to prove to people that I still can do it at my old age. <laughs>